Good morning, good morning. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Champagne mornings today, Friday, November 2nd, 2018. It is November. November, already. Already this year has gone by so quick. So quick and so much has happened at the same time. It drives me crazy. I know, <laughs> and so much still to happen. Man, so we're going to start this morning off with some comedic news. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early for this, our first segment of today. Kiana, what you got for us? So, you guys, this dude was dating this chick, right? We're going to call him Fraud Bay. That is his title today, Fraud Bay. Because you know what this dude did? He committed fraud. <laughs> he took her. They were dating. Uh, he hits her on one date. They're supposed to go on a double date. And was like, hey, babe, I lost my car. Can you spot me? And I'll pay you back. She's like, cool, no biggie. You know, blah, blah, blah. Because he hit her before the date, I think. So they go on the date. She slides him the card to pay for dinner. And this motherfucker stole her credit card information. Not only did this motherfucker steal her credit card information, but the next day, he's balling out. He's out popping it, big popping it. So she does a little investigation and starts getting fraudulent charges on her card. Can I tell you this nigga took her money and big balled out on his main chick? And when I say big <laughs> balled out, I mean sent her oh, flowers man. to work to stun on her coworkers. Took her to a trip to Paris. Nigga, how much money was in her bank account? Paris? Because I can't afford Paris with my bank account right now. She had one of them black cards. That she was a black had, card, yeah, credit card. She, she had something, but he bought out on her. Yeah. He bought out on her Paris trips, spa days. And I bet you she knew about the girlfriend. She didn't. She found out because, it's funny, Her one of the tracking informations was the... Uh, the plane ticket number. So her home girl, because they were in like UK or something. No, the, I'm saying the main girl knew, oh, knew about, about the, the side, side girl. Shit. He probably was like, look, let this me is the hit lick. this lick let right quick. Let me tell you this play I'm Yo, about I'm to not going to lie. My nigga, if I had a nigga, he could hit that lick. I'm good. I'm with it. Facts. I'm with it. Facts. Okay. That reminds me of the, um, the post that was on Facebook that got a lot of attention, I don't know, a couple weeks ago about the girl who, if she won the lotto and she won like uh, $7 million and she asked to take your, or $70 million and she asked to take your dude oh, on the, the trip. Oh, for the weekend? For the weekend. And, but she was only going to give you 100000 Like, would you take that deal? Listen, you know what I said today. Remember? Give me a million and you can have the nigga. <laughs> He's replaceable. <laughs> give me a million and you can take him for good. I'm good. That was, uh, you know what? We probably should have used that for one of our unpopular opinions because that one got arguments. That one was that one was pretty bad. A lot of people were like, "Oh no, my dude's worth more than a hundred thousand dollars." And my thing was this: we never said you was giving them away. You just letting them go on a weekend trip, quick. right? You too selfish to let Bay get some love and affection for a weekend. He want to <laughs> go to Jamaica. Ask Bay if he want to take that trip. <laughs> Uh, and one of the things said, <laughs> I'll ask him, <laughs> trick question. <laughs> like, <laughs> trick question is fuck. Shoot, I don't know. I, I think I would take the money. I'd expect him to come back with even more money. Facts. And but that's if I want to stay with you. What if I don't want you? What if I, like, she asked me right when I'm done with you? And I'm like, just take the nigga. Trade me a meal for the nigga, and you can have all him and his problems. Some girls right? are just waiting for their for their way out instead of taking their way out and so i guess that would be a good excuse if you were no. doing that it'd be like that sometimes okay i've been there before i will say that where i was not well not in the same way i just felt bad like i didn't really want to break up with them because he was cool people he cashed out on me like he was cool i just was in a a bad place space. in my head, yeah, at yeah. the time. It was right after my sister and brother had died. Like, I, was no, I wasn't shit to nobody at that point. Like Basically how I am right now. My, my, <laughs> no, no, not like you are right now. I'm not shit you're to just, nobody. Right, but in a different way. I wasn't shit to nobody just because I just didn't care about life in general. You didn't care general. about, you like, were in a bad, we you, were all in bad. Right, you just ain't shit in general like <laughs> ain't shit in general. I'm not shit I mean, shit. Let's, I mean not. let's not we're, play we're the being game honest. I was let's, say, be let's, not, let's not front for the radio today we're not, I'm you not know, shit I admit morning. it all the time if you've heard me you've been on any of my social medias you've seen me admit I ain't shit not when right it comes now, to relationships least. is what we're talking about right now yeah. but you know hey it, it's not it's not always time for a relationship let's just say it like that facts all right. So, um, in news, 
and just some general news that's going around around the country. Um, New York's raised the age law went into effect. And if you guys don't know, um, New York was charging kids at the age of 16. They weren't the only, I mean, DC was doing it as well, but DC, I believe, um, raised the age a lot sooner. New York's basically just took place where it went into effect. And so they were sending kids to Riker Island. Now, Automatically at 16, 17. 16, 17 years old, you were going to Rikers Island. Automatically charged as an adult. Like, I think here it depends on your charge and the extent of it and everything. But out there, it was you 16, 17, you're getting charged as an adult, no questions. And if you know, Rikers Island is the worst, like, jail in the country. It's historically and popularly known to be a horrible jail to have to go to in general. It's straight abuse, straight neglect. They're treated like literal animals, like worse than animals, because let's be real, America and people in general treat animals pretty good. I just had this conversation when I was doing somebody's hair the other day, and um, it came up like, I, I wonder why, and she actually brought it up. She was like, it almost seems like people care more about these animals than they do about human lives. Like there's That's black facts. people being killed all the time and but, don't nobody care, but let some violence come across some animals and it's war. Listen, we've watched videos of people getting shot by cops and we just seen people be hung, seen pictures of people being hung, releasing all that. But America is trying to fight China cause they want to eat dogs. Like, social media is after China right now because they have a dog eating week or something. I don't even know if it's real, but still, social media is going crazy about it. All right. And so Time did a whole special on um, about Rikers Island because of somebody specific, Khalif Browder. Uh, they did a Time special, and it was um, also produced by Jay-Z. Yep. Jay-Z had a big part in that. Jay-Z and Beyonce, they've, they've been very supportive and actually – what I would consider activists for black lives yeah, in our generation. Yeah, because back when Ferguson was having all those uh, marches and everything, they were quietly bailing people out. Clearly someone leaked it, if I know. But yeah, they were quietly bailing people out and making them sign NDA. So how you leak that information? You that, stupid. That was, that was pretty took that for one people to, to do that. Grave. Um, but the the special was really crazy. Now I'm going to go into the story a little bit. Kiana didn't actually watch the Khalif Kiana Browder story. Kiana did not watch the Khalif Browder story. Because she felt it was going to make her angry. So I felt like we needed to discuss this. Listen, I know me. I know what I have to do the next day. I know who I have to interact with. I'm the same girl that when I watched Roots for the first time in fifth grade, went to school and got expelled the next day for fighting. You were a child. For dealing with anger issues. You're I'm grown still now going through anger issues like I right. still remember when you tried to get me to watch underground I tried I went to school or went to work and was hella rude to everybody well I'm mm -hmm. also always hella rude to everybody but it was on 10 like that stuff angers me and I deal with it and then I watch tv or I turn on the news or I turn on facebook and I constantly deal with it kind of pick and choose sometimes what I'm gonna deal with how much I can deal with that so hopefully in the course of everybody continuing to listen to champagne mornings and kiana being my co-host on here um we get past this because that's a i think this is something that a lot of people deal with they don't want to know because they don't want it to affect their life they don't want to have to hear some truths and actually have to go through life knowing this is going on or that's going on because it does affect how it, it could affect their interaction and then um having control over your emotions yeah I, i've been struggling with that lately i'm usually the one that's preaching like control over emotions and shit but we all have preaching it because you hear it and preaching it because you're living it you know and, and I, that's the biggest the thing like avoids it all the time because you know i'm with you when something happens i'm sending you articles even before champagne mornings was a thing we would send articles and discuss mm -hmm. things happening the lynchings the rikers island thing those are things mm -hmm. we've always been able to discuss but to sit there and watch a whole hour and some change of it is like crap i need a break i'd have to watch it in segments and i'm not here to judge i'm just saying it's something to work on something to self-reflect learning how to be able to take in information and still go about your day because that's the biggest thing we're giving a lot very early in the morning it's very early in the morning people you know like you guys just like us we're we're about to start our day we both got to go to work after this mm -hmm. um but 
it's important topics and important things that we should be thinking about on a daily. Um, but anyways, to go back up a little bit, we're going to go over to Khalif Browder's story. It was a time special. Um, it's currently on Netflix, so you guys can still uh, watch that. But he did three years on Riker Island. He got sent to Rikers Island when he was 16. He did three years there. He spent over 700 days in solitary confinement. And three months of those were straight. Three months straight in there. At the age of 16, solitary confinement. They starved him. And guess what he went in for? Wasn't it just like theft or something? For stealing a backpack. Allegedly stealing a backpack. That they couldn't prove. That had a camera and $700 in it and a credit card. Um, They had no evidence that he did it. They had the one witness who was the victim who kept changing their story. First they said that he stole it. And then they said that he tried to steal it. And then flip flop back that he did steal it, that it happened three weeks prior to the arrest. He claims that he was at home at the time that it happened. And when he went to jail, um, he did get set for bail originally. He would. He had a nine hundred dollar bail. His mom just didn't have that money. Now Which is a thing. Like that's why bail works because low income people don't got that. You got that money sitting around somewhere. I can make it. But, oh, I'd be making. But everybody it. doesn't have the, the. Everybody doesn't have a hustle. Everybody doesn't have ways that they make money. Especially if you didn't grow up in a life where you made side money. And all you're relying on is, you know, a low paying hourly job in New York City, which ain't nothing because you're when you're already in literally the lowest area income area in the city. You don't really have much. Yeah, you don't have much choices. So that nine hundred dollars, it took her a long time to come up with it. And then when she finally did come up with it, she goes down there and found out that they denied his bail while they were trying to do the paperwork. They denied it because he was had got caught riding in a stolen vehicle with one of his friends before and was put on probation. So it was considered a violation of his probation to have a charge, whether true or not. He ended up spending three years in there over that. New York just need a whole reform, yo. <laughs> yeah. Our, I know our justice system as a whole needs a whole reform, but I feel like New York is so excessive. It is. It's so excessive. It is. They had their they they were the worst with the stop and frisk. Yeah, they were hands down the worst with the stop and frisk to the point where it was borderline illegal. So they just made it more lenient on the laws. Yeah, Khalif Brothers, his uh little brother said that he thought it was just another one of those situations. It was like, oh, he his brother got picked up. He figured his brother would be out in a couple hours, and then next thing you know he wasn't being released and then it started to worry them like wait what's going on why isn't he being released they were often i've known people personally from new york who just got picked up and said that they did this charge that they they were walking to the store yeah literally i know some people who went through that and then on Rikers island the one of the biggest problems there too was that it was the guards. Yeah, it's not even... The guards were allowing... The guards basically set up... They had this thing called Get With The Program, which was um, an extortion program set up by the guards. So when new people came in, they came into the house and they had a choice to either get give up their commissary and phone times and things like that, or they would get beat up. If you told the guards, the guards would say, well, get with the program. The program was the guards had basically selected certain inmates that were part of their own gang, so to say, and they allowed them to run this extortion program. And then, of course, they got their little benefits as guards from that, too. And the guards was making sure to get stuff, you know, into the jails and stuff for them as what happens in all prisons. Right. But um, it's... You know, how else do they get drugs in the prison other than through the guards, right? The only option. So, um, yeah. So they would get beat up multiple times until they gave in. And if they never got with the program, if they didn't get with the program, then um, they said they would put them on a bus. And what putting on a bus meant is they would beat them up so bad that they would have to be, like, flat boarded out. And then they would be transferred to another house. But then it only continued in the At next, this house. next house. Next set of people. Yep, next set of people, next set of the gang. You get with the program or you don't get with the program. And to think they're taking those same guards now and putting them in the juvenile detention 
that they're taking the same guards, the same kids from Rikers Island and putting them in the juvenile uh, detention. Like that's going to change anything. Well, so, and then that was a big thing. I actually read a different article about that because DC did the same thing. Remember I said DC was charging them at 16. So DC moved um, their kids to a different place and they actually hadn't had any breakouts, any fights or anything like that. Like it worked well. Well, the article I read on it, the one I went ahead and sent you, it literally said that they've already had riots and the riots have been from the guards antagonizing the kids and that they attacked them. They had a riot and now they're trying to up the stakes. So in, I guess in juveniles in New York, they're not allowed to use pepper spray or really hit them or any of that. You right know? now, yeah, they're working on And they're that. trying to change that law. What they said is that they Rikerized the island. So, I mean, they oh, Rikerized the juvenile, the juvenile center. center. Yep. So what happened was instead of like DC did, they took the kids out and they put them in a lower uh, security facility. Well, all the New York did was up the security at the juvenile before they even put the kids there. So basically they just recreated the same problem and the, the program. So when it said get with the program, talking about those, that was a specific like string of guards there Mm -hmm. and uh, cases got put on all of them. So that's still under investigation, investigation and that case is still going on. But because they reinforced walls and put the plexiglass and have whole rooms full of riot gear just in case well everybody knows if it it sets a tone yeah it sets a tone when you're there so yeah they moved them away but they were already technically even though they were all on rikers islands they're already separated from the adults on rikers island but it gives them the same feeling you just put us in a different building with with the same feeling it's not going to change anything when dc did it they put them in a whole different building gave it a whole different feeling and it worked out Mm -hmm. new york's doing it and they're doing it wrong and having the same problem and now you're trying to bring, blame the kids nah brother kids like these are legit kids you look at a 16 or 17 year old art we got nieces and nephews at that age and those are our babies like i couldn't imagine being when i was 16 years old i was a junior in high school and i mean everybody has little run-ins with police arguments with police but to be taken for a crime that i didn't do and sent to a prison not even yeah, like juvie. you're you're gonna go to you're gonna go to juvie you're gonna go to even as an adult you go to jail until your sentence is over a year you know so these guys are getting sent to the island immediately right you're getting picked up and going straight to the island that's so crazy so that article and this whole timeline gave me a new segment that we will be on the show <coughs> called fuck the police Facts. fuck them fuck them they're not for us like, even the ones that are supposedly for us and all of that, you're not speaking out on the others, so you're not for us. Until you can stand up against the people that you're around, it's a problem. If I'm with a group of friends and I feel like they're bullying somebody, I'm going to say something. I'm We're like, why are it. you guys messing with him Listen, or her? I've literally gotten into it with my best friend about bullying people. Right. Like, we don't do bullying. And to childish. And like you had mentioned on our last show, like you got all these different departments the the justice system in general the police coroners like all these people are actually working together to keep in situations to frame people to frame and that's what they do they're all friends they buddy buddy they figure it out they go to coffee after my nigga like <laughs> It's yeah, ridiculous. It is. So who sad. you got? Who we talking about today? What officer? What police? So what they do? Sherry Hall is a police officer. She was actually sentenced to 15 years in prison, followed by 23 um, months of probation it, for lying and saying that a black man shot her. She said that she had got shot three How times. How do you hate a race so bad that you frame an imaginary black man? They had picked somebody else out up and everything. She said it was him. He had shot her multiple times. How do you hate somebody that much? The worst part is how do you hate a race? How can you be such of a racist that you shoot yourself to frame somebody? Investigation found that she had shot herself with her own gun. What makes you wake up today and say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shoot myself three times. <laughs> I'm going to call the bro. And I'm going to tell him so-and-so did it. Like, even if one of us wanted somebody beat up by one of our people, we're not going to beat on ourselves to make it look like it. Like, no, you have a real mental problem. A thin line between love and hate type thing. (laughs) (laughs) 
that girl was legit crazy. She was crazy, bro. Legit hey, she crazy. warned him. Don't play with me. Is that what Cardi B did? And <laughs> Cardi B just crazy, okay? I like Cardi, but she got some issues. It's okay, I got those. I got some issues. Not those issues. <laughs> Nowhere near those issues. She, I mean, in her song, she says it's a warning. Don't play with her heart. She, she might be on something like that. Who knows? Or she mm. might just bust out all your windows. Cardi B seems like the bust your windows type because in the same song, she says she's going to make them a bowl of cereal with bleach. And you're just going to wake up and ask her why she has an attitude. Nigga, you're going to know why I have an attitude. I'm waking you up. Let me go through that phone and find some shit. It's going down. Maybe. I don't know. You know I'm weird about that. I might say something about what I find. I might not. I might. I might. You start playing a game with me. I might and play I'm going to be <laughs> like, okay, game's on. You know? It, it's going to become. Instead of me getting mad. It only makes sense for me to make it become a challenge to myself or a game. The best, <laughs> may the best person win. Damn, dad raised anxious ass kids. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? Dad raised some savages. I don't think it, I simply think it's this. It's meeting people where they meet you. If you are 100 with me, I'm going to be 100 with you. You start playing games. I can play games, too. They're kind of fun, actually. They are pretty fun, yo. <laughs> the games, the games. Listen, they can be. Back on topic, I ain't shit. We know this. <laughs> you guys have seen it. Y'all have witnessed it. I am not shit all the time. Most of the time. <sighs> There's one good one out the King Kids. That would be Who, me. Auntie? <laughs> that, that would be me. Good. Not you at all. Actually. Not you at all. I'm, I'm I don't think auntie there. shit like I know her real side of auntie. I don't think there's one. Nene's the only good king relative, and she a niece. It had to go a couple generations. And she's seventeen, <laughs> so we don't know anything about her actually. And she's under Bubba. Anyways, let's move on <laughs> to a lighter subject. We got unpopular opinion for today. So my unpopular opinion subject for today. I threw out there because I actually overheard somebody else say this about somebody and it was saying that she never wears her natural hair. She's probably insecure about her race. It was a black girl um, who literally always wears weaves. I'm talking about like not even braids, just sewing straight Brazilian weaves. I weave. think that has nothing to do with her being insecure because she's pretty confident weaves ain't cheap my only thing is how do you do that like my scalp would be on fire bruh weaves be having my head itching i can't do it i agree i don't think it has anything to do with whether you are insecure about being black or anything like that i think that it just simply has to do with what you prefer now it can be i'm not saying that it can't be because i do also know some people who, who don't like their hair who really don't like their hair. They just, they don't like their hair being that black and people who try to blend in a lot. When we had the whole, um, what happened was a natural hair movement to the point where relaxer companies were actually going out of business and losing a lot of money and starting to have to create new products. They're, because they're starting to have to open to the natural hair market because we're on it. Because so many people decided to actually love their natural beauty. Now, I don't believe that wearing weaves means that you don't like your natural beauty, though. I think those are two separate things that can interchange. They can interchange, but not necessarily meaning. Like, I know people who don't want to deal with their natural hair, because let's be honest, natural hair is a lot of work. It right. is a lot of work. You have to do something to your hair every morning, or your shit will fall off and die. So some of the responses we got on here, we had from um, Essence King on Facebook. She said, blackness or being black isn't a total mark chart of things you do or don't do. Facts. She got a Facts. lot of likes on that one. And and I agree too. Like there this conversation of what's black and what's not happens all the time. And I hate it. <laughs> Another one we had is um just it's not true. Some people's natural hair is not manageable or they don't have the education on doing their natural hair. Now that's a big one. She said that was her. She went natural for two years and after education on how to manage her hair, now she has dreads, she had to watch video videos. But weaves are versatile. She actually still wears wigs, weaves, braids, all of that. Over her dreads. And she's dope. 
She yeah. used to teach me because my forehead big, but I want to wear some weaves. Yeah, she does pretty good there. And um, also a quick shout out there. That was from Sinetria. She does have her own podcast. We might have to bring her on ours too. It's called The Naked Truth. Have you talked talks in? about? I have tapped in. I have Absolutely. tapped in too. Um, she talks about a lot of relationship type things. And so I was told by my homeboy Flo that I shouldn't talk about relationships i don't give advice on relationships so my answer at the beginning and end of every session where we start talking about relationships (laughs) is family first because flo said flo said that's my answer and flo demanded that like that wasn't a flo said that was a whole conversation where he was adamant that you don't give relationship advice (laughs) you don't your final answer is your family he says your first and last answer is family first so that will be it the first and last answer of any relationship segment from shirlicia (laughs) <laughs> they just don't ask me yeah so um just some more that we got on that about the black hair situation um is that it doesn't survive your security or blackness it comes in different lengths textures some people said it, they do it for protecting their hair now me personally i love braids me i too. love weave me i too. wear my natural curl most of the time because my natural hair does not actually like being in braids my hair tends to break off even if I keep it moisturized when it's in braids. Mine too. Mine is because that, my hair, listen, my hair after braids, it looks so cute in the braids. When you take it out, it you can feel the difference. Also, all of that makes my scalp itch. And I'm not going to walk around patting my head all day. And patting don't do it good enough. <laughs> I'm the worst. And it might be because I do hair too, but I'll, I'll wear my hair for like four days and take it out. Well, maybe because I have you, because you know how many people get mad. Like, you begged your sister for a week to braid your hair, and you're taking it out in three days? Yeah. (laughs) We had a couple (laughs) males uh, chime in, but they didn't really chime in. Only one one said, uh, Lamar, he said that, you know, whoever said that should slap themselves. So if you're listening, go ahead and handle that. (laughs) (laughs) And um, one of our other friends, he simply said, he's not hopping in the conversation because he don't want to get Facebook lynched. Which is funny because he stays doing unpopular shit. <laughs> he stays getting lynched in his own comments, but you can't that hop would on be ours and get lynched in ours. <laughs> not not on a thread full of girls, obviously. He was not hopping into Listen, that Listen, this is the dude that, who every other status, he's arguing with somebody on his. But that's what I'm saying. That's his. <laughs> he he was a, control there's a whole he thread of with. girls. Like he's like, nah, girls, I'm good. They might gang up on him just because. I think that's where he was going with that. But I think that is hilarious. So and on some crazy, just random Trump stuff. Trump always got something going on, right? <sighs> Can we get this dude out of office already? Like, <laughs> already. Much? Make sure you guys go out and vote for November the prelims. Six. We need you guys out there. Don't. I don't want to hear you guys saying, "Oh, don't vote." Oh, I don't vote, and then complain later. Right. And we don't have time to go through how the whole electoral college system works. All you need to know is that it is important to vote. And it takes literally no time. Like, you don't even have to go anywhere to vote anymore. You can get it sent to you in the mail. Mine's at home. Actually, mine's arrived recently, and it's sitting in my car waiting for me to vote. So make sure you guys get your votes in. They matter. For the prelims, for even when it comes to your your governors and your local office ones, you should be very focused in that, too. But this side, Trump. 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 (laughs) Oh, my God. He just... He frustrates the hell out of me because he has so many ignorant followers that really believe, like, they have no idea how things work, and they his really believe everything so that he says. so that we're on episode three of Champagne Mornings, and his followers have been mentioned every episode. Yeah, that's a problem. So this time, Trump says that he is going to make an executive order to not allow people who are born just because you're born in the United States, that doesn't mean you have citizenship if you're from a different country. You literally can't do that. <laughs> like That takes a lot for something like that to be changed. That's not something that can actually be changed. You can't amend an amendment, an amendment by executive <laughs> order. It just doesn't work like that. First off, why is Trump allowed to sign so many executive orders? Like I feel like out of every president I've been alive for done research on, this dude is signing executive orders left and right he is but you know what uh in (laughs) in a way and i hate to give him any credit 
I actually think the fact that he came in and he did what he wants shows a lot. And I love Obama to death. But I do feel like Obama could have did a lot more for black people had he have had, if he would have been more bold. Now, yes, he might have got a lot of hate, but look how much hate Trump does. And he still does what he wants to do. I also think a major thing is that uh, Obama was the only one. He was the only Democrat in the whole Republican. It was a Republican House when he was there. So but an executive order takes only him. That's true. Exactly. And, and he th- was it just takes you. Scary. It just takes the the boldness of not giving a fuck. Trump don't, don't give, give a, a fuck. fuck. <laughs> now, besides that, him saying things that can't even be true to spark and get some interest and get people to come behind him, that's stupid. Like amending a constitution will require majorities in the House and Senate, three fourths of the states, to agree. You're not going to get three fourths of the states. Listen, to agree you didn't on even that. get the popular vote, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> like you're not winning that. Right. You you barely won the electoral college, let alone getting three fourths of the country to actually agree with making that amendment or dis- dissolving that amendment. But not say. to side on Trump. I did do research on that because that was something I immediately researched. You know, we're one of the only countries that allow that. Really. Mm-hmm. Other places, just because you're born there, does not mean you get citizenship. They will still ship your ass home. But what's home? Wherever your parents are from. Wherever your parents have citizenship is where you'll get your citizenship. Which is weird because then it would draw but a long line But that makes sense, though, because shit. if I had a baby in a different country, they would still be... American. An American citizen. So. That's why it never made sense with the whole Obama's not really American. Like, y'all never denied that was his mama. Y'all never said his mama wasn't American. How the hell is he not American? Yeah, and some country citizenship follows the father, which I thought was weird. Really? Yeah, because I looked it up because um, my ex from Barbados, and in Barbados they go by your father for citizenship. So that's weird. He's an he American is. citizen, but he can get dual citizenship because his father, specifically said father, was born in Barbados. Even though in his case, his mom and his dad. I mean, he's obviously, but. Just when I was looking up the rules, I thought that was interesting because can't nobody say your mom ain't your mom. Like, you came out your mom, that's your mom. That's what I was thinking. Like, here, there's certain states where you can't even have your father's last name unless a DNA test or you're married. Like, Vegas, where people would have a lot of baller babies that aren't really baller babies. (laughs) (laughs) You have to have proof that that's your father. So, for other countries to lie, rely, like Barbados, to lie so solely on the fathers, it's interesting. Very so we're going to end today's conversation with one new segment as well the petty hall of fame our first inductee into the petty hall of fame is none other than 50 cent 50 cent (laughs) you can't (laughs) if you expected anyone else there's something wrong with you right now (laughs) it's so funny i um told kiana i said i think i have a new segment we're gonna call the petty hall of fame and she immediately said oh you're inducting 50 cent (laughs) yes yes i am he does his most recent action that that he's topped it off. He's constantly petty though. Like, his he, his this most dude recent is... action was buying all the jaw roll tickets. He he bought like two hundred jaw roll tickets just so his front concert would seats. be empty. Front row seats though. The front like two three rows. He just took over. He was like, I'm buying those, taking them over just so it looks empty. Like who's that? But he is the petty I petty. aspire to be. He I don't <laughs> aspire to be petty at all, especially that level. I need to be that. The, level. I, I want to be that rich. That where I can buy 200 front row seats and not even care just because I'm mad at somebody. I mean, on the other side, the tickets were 15 bucks. Oh, they were only 15. Not for front row. For yes, front they row. were. For front row, they were 15 on Groupon. Oh, right? my God. Jairo, I'm sorry. I will support you if you come here just for the support. I might not actually come, but I'll buy that ticket. Probably not. I, I wish I had the why you fuck you lying uh, <laughs> <the> <laughs> review button because I was like, there's no way. There's no way that I'm going to do that. Um, I've, I have seen him in concert, though. It wasn't that bad. Back when I was in high school, the How whole murder. That? I said high school. How long ago was high school? Ooh, I, I graduated in 05. Exactly. Right. And it wasn't that bad, though. It was him. Um, Ashanti even came. Lloyd was there. Like, literally the okay, whole wait, crew. Okay, wait. Pause. You bring Lloyd. I'm coming. I love Lloyd's voice. Dude's not really that cute, but his voice is amazing to me. 
You do love him? I do. I love Lloyd. Oh, what would you think about his newest album that he dropped? Yeah, I didn't listen. Okay, so shut up. She doesn't love you, Lloyd. Um, I do. Sorry that I had to put her on blast there. I she do loved love, you? I love old school Lloyd. I didn't listen. When he grew his, when he pressed his hair, did that weird shit with his hair, that's when he lost me. You see how she's retracting that? I just want to make sure I point that out really quick as we end Champagne Mornings this morning. I'm not dealing Thank with you your guys shit all for today. tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> we about to get up out of here. Um, make sure you guys check us on Monday. Next Monday, we will be back up and at it. And we are here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 30 a.m. Until <laughs> until we're done talking, you know. So thank you guys again. Enjoy the rest of your day and make sure you go out and do something positive. Oh, I almost forgot. We always shout out a black business at the end of our event. So today's black business I'm going to shout out is um, LSE 15. It's a basketball program put on right now in Seattle, Mm -hmm. in the south end of Seattle um, by Lodrick Stewart. Oh, they're about to be lit, man, because Lodrick's dope. Lodrick and Roderick, if you don't know, were two of two of the most elite basketball players that came out of Seattle went to college um, and they're giving back to the community. And that's at the end of the day, what I strive to do and what I feel like most people should is not only be there to better yourself, but also better the youth because they're our future and that's sports keeps them engaged. It keeps in extracurricular activities in general, but you do what you can. He chose Especially sports in because the South he does basketball. Especially like that keeps kids out of trouble because if you know anything about the South and it's really easy to go from good kid to bad kid like that. Yeah, and a lot of uh, inner cities, urban cities, have that problem where if you don't basically if you don't have your kids in something, it leaves them time to do anything. Have your kids in something, and he's made it very affordable. He's only charging right now. Fifteen dollars a season for your kid. Seriously, I'm dead serious. He's taking little um, league costs more than that. He's he's taking a lot of ages, uh, girls and boys. So make sure you guys tap in with him again. It's LSC fifteen, I believe. I'm not sure if he has an Instagram page for his business, but I do know I see it on his Instagram all the time. Um, and it's in the South End, Seattle. I'm pretty sure if you do a little bit of search or tap into the Street Plug DJs or the Champagne Mornings Instagram, and I'll make sure to put that information up so that you guys can get your kids involved um, or even support. If, if you guys, like I said, he's only charging $15 a person. If you can person. support anyway, if, if you, you can support, drop donate. your time, your money, your whatever you feel you can help. Because all we're trying to do is better the community. All he's trying to do is better his community. That and he it starts with in. the youth. It starts with the youth because they're our future and if we can make it better for them, we'll actually make it better for ourselves. Facts. All right. Thank you guys again. Tuning in. Champagne mornings.